Sorry we're a little late. We were outside for the second time in a row here in December in balmy South Bend. Okay, all right. It was, uh, uh, we were outside again today in South Bend. Can you guys get that out there, please? <laughs> that was the point. We have a lot of recruits uh, on campus and we practice outside in South Bend in December. That's the point. Do I have to write all this stuff out for you guys? Okay, got it. Uh, second practice today, uh, full gear, uh, got a lot of work in. And, uh, you know, we're not, you know, at the point where we're uh, looking at Ohio State. We're really just trying to get the guys back into football related activities, movement, um, individual, group. You know, we had some, you know, 11 on 11 today for about 15, 20 minutes. So, uh, good work the last couple of days, getting guys that were injured back into the swing of things and some key backups, getting them a lot of work, mostly key backup work, a little bit of ones, but mostly twos and key backups. Um, like I said, some injured guys, getting them back into the fold, um, you know, building some continuity with the quarterback and, and making sure Deshaun gets a lot of the things that we felt like we needed to continue to work on. Um, a little bit of special teams, um, but a lot of individual work to start the practice and then to finish up the practice, a lot of uh, you know, uh, 11 on 11 work and, and getting back into some situational. So we'll take one more practice. Um, you know, Again, we're, we're finishing through reading days. We'll be in exams next week. We'll take one more day. He's trying to get the information out on us practicing. <laughs> outdoors. We'll take one more day in, in terms of, uh, you know, getting our football team back to where I need them uh, in, in football related activities and then we'll begin to look at Ohio State. So um, we'll hit eight practices prior to going down to um, uh, Phoenix Scottsdale and of those eight, five would, would be Ohio State, three would be general practices, if you will. Um, so we'll duplicate, you know, a normal weeks of, of practice here for Ohio State. So when we go down there, we'll already have our week preparation uh, and then we'll duplicate that down at site. So that's the plan. Open it up to questions. Well, it is helpful to be outside in the elements. It really is. And, you know, we obviously have much more room where we can do a lot more of the individual work that you want. Um, you know, you're, you're splitting the field indoors. So it does cut back on, on some of the things that you can do. So it's, it's an, definitely an advantage for us to, to get these couple of days outside. Aaron, what's your early impressions of Jerron Jones and Jerron Smythe? Yeah. Maybe yeah, well, um, you know, I think, you know, Jerron is probably, you know, has further to go in terms of, you know, he's such a big guy and, and you know, he's playing a position that requires such great leverage, which equals more uh, strength and power uh, than, than, say, Durham, who uh, is playing a, a position that, you know, doesn't necessarily need that kind of power. Um, so there are two different evaluations. Um, I would say that he was much better today, Jerron, than he was the first day. A little tentative, I thought, the first day. Today, I thought he uh, was uh, more confident. And, and then we upped his reps. He probably got about 15 reps today and started to see some good things. He was a little high on some of the double team work. We got to get his pads down, but he really pushed the pocket. I think one of the things that I saw that is, is pretty clear is that, you know, his ability from that, that shade position to push the pocket that we really missed really would have helped us with, you know, Sheldon coming off the edge and, and Romeo. Uh, we didn't have that hard inside push, which he gives you instantly. Um, I think we're going to be able to get that from him. Durham looks really good, physically strong. Um, it has kind of jumped right in there and, um, both of those guys will be able to uh, help us against Ohio State. Brian, you put up good numbers offensively, and I know that's projection. You have other tight ends in there. But I mean, can you look back and see how much it hurt not having Jordan Smythe, the guy that had pretty much won the job when he was a progressive starter? 
you know, I think maybe situationally a little bit. Um, you know, you know, I think he, he became a guy that, you know, w was, was going to be heavily counted on in some certain situations, short yardage, uh, passes, uh, red zone passes, things of that nature. Um, you know, again, I'm, I'm, he's the kind of guy that, you, you know, I think that Deshaun would have probably leaned on in those kinds of situations. Yeah. Is it a, is that, is that just a higher percentage than most teams? No, I, no, no, I think that, that, that their system of offense has some similarities in terms of what we do. Um, you know, they, they just have been, you know, really committed to their, their run game uh, with Ezekiel Elliott and, and their offensive line and JT Barrett in terms of him being the second threat there. But everything that they do is you know, based upon, you know, their ability to throw it off of their run game, uh, which is, you know, has a lot of similarities to what we do. We just choose to maybe throw it a little bit more. And what about the multiplicity of, of their option uh, choices? Is that greater than most teams other than, of course, the triple option team? Yeah. No, I don't think so, Tim. I, I think that there's, again, a lot of similarities to what we do in their offensive system. Uh, they're a lot more committed to, um, you know, staying the course, running the football, um, you know, uh, keeping it short yardage, down in distance, and, and staying away from, you know, third and long. They do a really good job of, of that. What can Deshaun and Coach Stanford kind of gain from evaluating the season from like a 10,000 foot view when they're not playing their games specifically? Well, like just these last couple of days, just you know, you know, working on some technique things that that we need to be better at, um, getting the ball out of his hand quicker on some of our movement passes to the perimeter. We, as you know, we did not move the pocket very much with him because he was not very good at um, you know throwing on the run, and and we've. We've increased that the last couple of weeks of the season where we got some, some perimeter throws because, you know, you're playing off coverage on Will. If we run some quick, you know, spot hitches on the outside with quarterback movement, you know, those are chain movers. So we've worked on that. I think he's, he's definitely feels more comfortable on the move. And then I think the biggest thing is when the field shrinks, you know, just, you know, he was really good today. I think he was six of nine or six of eight on third down. Deshaun, and his percentage was not quite that in the red zone. So, you know, situationally working on those and then some fundamental things we can continue to get better at. What's the benefit for a guy like Brandon getting three practices or I mean, to me, I think it's more about repetition and getting to that time where he doesn't have to think about it. It's just... I know that's a boundary up read, it's too deep, that, that's where the ball goes, and he's not thinking about it anymore. So just, just the, the repetition of, of getting those meaningful reps is invaluable for him. You know, I, I will say this, excuse me, Malik has taken some reps. Um, he's well ahead of schedule, he will not play. Um, but he's in there taking reps, um, phenomenal in terms of the way he's been able to, you know, get back and, and you know, move around and throw the football. So he's taken some seven on seven reps and, um, you know, he's just, you know, incredible what he's been able to do in a very short period of time. Can he help you on the scout team at all, Malik? Well, he's helping us right now. So we'll see. I, I don't know if we want to put him in a, a situation like that where sometimes it becomes a jailbreak uh, on scout team against, you know, the first defense. I don't know if I want to risk him in those kinds of situations. I think I'll keep him close to me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that word flash is probably it. He's very athletic, runs well. Um, he's kind of mature for his age. You know, he has a maturity to him. Um, the way he comes to practice every day, very focused kid. Um, and he he has some traits um, and and 
obviously um, they're not just running around. He has some physicality to him. He has a good sense of where he is when he drops. You know, it's not like he's looking for receivers. He senses and feels receivers. He's he's going to be a really good football player. You know, I, I think that's a lot of it's yet to be determined. I think he's a guy that that has some you know ability to play Will or Sam. You know, because he's got speed. He's got traits that allow him to you know, have some multiplicity in that sense. Yeah, we're, he's on the Alter G right now, really working to get up to full speed without too much pressure on that. Um, I think he's on schedule to begin practicing late next week. I can't confirm it, but um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't uh, expect him to be back. We didn't have any uh, allusions to that effect. Um, our expectations were to get him back this year and to get his degree completed and really transition him to move on after this year. So um, I would be surprised if it was anything but that. But I, I haven't, you know, sat down with him on that. Yeah, we'll we'll sit down and and if, you know in certain situations if we need to be uh, in their homes, um, you know we've put together a plan for all of those guys to do so. We're waiting for you know their draft information to come back, so you know it's it's a process. But that would be part of it if if that's something that we felt like um, was necessary to um, close the loop, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, I, I still think that in those situations, um, you know, we want to present them with all of that uh, information and, and um, our opinions are, are going to be based upon what's in their best interest. And I, I would tell him, you know, and I would tell Ronnie, if, if you're going to be the first tackle or if you're going to be the first one taking at your position, um, is you got to seriously consider, you know, what your future looks like, it's not probably going to get much better. So we're pretty honest and upfront with our evaluations on both sides of it. If we think a kid is going to drop into the third or fourth round and, and they can do better for themselves in their future with a degree and, you know, maybe getting a better opportunity, then we'll tell them that. But I think you have to be fair on both sides. I, can't, I don't think you can paint just one picture that everything's better if you stay. You know, there are going to be certain situations like a Jalen Smith and a, a Ronnie Stanley that it's better for them uh, if they do go to the NFL. With the uh, news of Adolphus Washington kind of coming out this week, does that open up things in the run game for you guys in your opinion? Oh, his suspension? Yeah. Uh, I hadn't given it much thought, really. Uh, he's a really good football player, but um, they're a lot like uh, Alabama. They're a lot like... Um, you know, some of the great defenses, they're going to roll out another really good football player. Um, so, um, yeah, we weren't, we weren't running around the office high-fiving. Um, <laughs> we, we didn't think that they were going to put a JV player in there. Well, you know, our guys know what the expectations of them in terms of how they handle themselves on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and, and it's not different than anything that we're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. Look, you know, bowl game preparation is about attitude, your attitude, and, and uh, about your team. And, and those two things have always carried the day for me in terms of bowl preparation. So if your attitude's right and you understand what we're doing and how we're doing it as a team, um, then they'll stay out of harm's way and they'll make good decisions. So, Ron, in terms of uh, the, whole, the, whole, the whole schedule you talked about earlier, mm -hmm. how's it compared to past? And I guess what have you learned since uh, Ryan McGivern in terms of bowl preparation? 
well, you know, obviously the exam schedule, uh, you, you have to be very careful in the way you work around it. You don't have large windows, so you have to pick your spots. Um, and you have to have some time off for the guys. You know, we've been fortunate, other than the pinstripe bowl, that they've had Christmas off each and every year, five out of the six years. I, I think it's really good to give them some time there. I like to get a full week of preparation for your opponent before you go to the site. That's been my go-to, if you will. We'll be able to do that again. Um, I think it gives you the best opportunity to stay away from um, you know, any of the distractions that normally occur when you get to the bowl site. So uh, really do a good week of preparation here has been kind of the blueprint. Um, and then try to give them some time off around Christmas. Well, I think it's like I said, and, and, you know, you have to have the right frame of mind going into these games. It's about your attitude, and it's about what you want to accomplish as a team. Um, you know, you have to be bought in 100% about playing this game and the purpose of this game. Um, you can't be thinking about, you know, what your individual future is about. This is about a focus on the attitude of the football team and you know, what you want to accomplish as a team. And preparation's preparation. It won't change much from that standpoint. We're not going to out-coach them. They're not going to out-coach us. It'll be the attitude of the football team and, and about the team playing together. Well, they get a little bit more work. I told them today, I said, look, you're going to get a little bit of work. You're not going to get a ton of work here. You'll get, you'll get some days, and you know, you're going to have to make us notice you. It's not our job to notice you. It's your job to make us notice you in these next two or three days. And so take advantage of the opportunity uh, that you have. Um, and, and some of them have. Uh, and, and they'll get another opportunity to, to do that. Um, so there's a little bit of that spring ball in here, but it's not all spring ball. This is business too. We want to we want to prepare our team to to, to beat Ohio State. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, you know, getting Jerome back in there can be helpful to us. There's no question. I think James Onowalu can help us a little bit, uh, though I thought Greer played pretty good. Um, you know, Kavari is a loss for us. There's no question. But I, I like the way Devin Butler played, you know. So, um, you know, it, it really comes down to the, the 11 guys we got out there are just going to have to play a little bit better than they did against um, Stanford. Uh, I thought we did some really good things. Look, the one thing that we've done all year uh, consistently is that we've, take, we, we've taken away the one player that can wreck a game. And whether it be Keenan Reynolds or Christian McCaffrey or um, you know, any of the individual players all year. We've done a really good job there. Um, it's, it's been, you know, some of the other guys that we should be able to defend um, with our guys. We haven't done a very good job. Um, we're going to have to do that again with, a, you know, a Barrett and Ezekiel and um, do a better job against the other guys. And that will be the same plan going into this, this game. There was one more. He'd have to he'd have to appeal uh, for him to get another year. Would that, be, that is through, through the NCAA. Oh. Yeah. Do you guys know what that would be, or that would have to be a wait and see approach? No, it'd be we'd have to we're going to submit one, but it'd have to be a wait and see. Thanks, Good. Everybody.